Okay, so this is uh, part 7 of the um, data processing in Chromium video series. Um, so, so in the last video, uh, like uh, you learned about how to create reports uh, using the report designer. Uh, let's come back to data processing itself and uh, let me clear out some of this thing. I don't need interactive results. I want the processing method. I don't need MS components. Um, I don't need the calibration plot. Okay. So let me. So I want to see the tick, the total line chromatogram. So if I so I click on the tick and I'll see the tick. So if I double click over here, you know, to zoom out to full scale. So uh, what I wanted to show you is uh, a few more. Uh, of these tabs you know what each of these tabs are so let's uh, let's go to MS settings because uh, you know it's very interesting over here so let me zoom in to this region and uh, let me click over here so you know that's our symmetric peak uh, let me make this a bit bigger so you can see okay and um, uh, like we talked about in the last video, you know, you had uh, there are even though it looks like one peak, there are basically two elute two co eluting analytes in this one single peak. So in this MS settings, uh, there are a few things uh, that uh, you might want to know. So peak spectrum bunch with one spectra. So what does it mean? I mean what it means is it's going to so whenever I click on this peak you know it's going to take one spectra at the apex of this peak okay okay so uh, let me show you let me show you let me let me zoom in further okay and what I want to show you is uh, each of these data points on this peak okay so let me to do that uh, you right click go to properties and in this properties uh, signal details and I want to see the raw data points okay and you click close and you know you'll see the each of these data points right so each each one is a different spectra different mass spectra okay so wh whenever I click on the speak it's going to take just one spectra and it's going to display it over here in this mass spectra pane. Okay, so so this is basically this this point over here. Okay, so if I want an average of three, so it will take the average of these three points. Okay, and um, over here uh, right now there's no baseline correction. Okay, so no baseline correction. But if I wanted, I could select peak dependent correction so when I click this uh, what actually happens is is uh, it will um, do a baseline correction based on the left and the right so basically it will you know subtract the mass spectra which is like one spectra um, before the peak starts and one spectra after the peak starts so you know that will help uh, I guess clean up um, your uh, uh, you know the spectra which is because of say column bleed okay so 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 if I click over here can you see that and I click back on peak so there are some changes right so basically it's subtracting um, so um, over here you don't see much of column bleed because you know this is a you know like a huge peak and you know the column bleed is somewhere in very low levels but you know if you have a very small peak now let's see this peak uh, I don't know I don't see column bleed over here too but you can see you know clear differences right when I do no baseline correction and you know peak dependent baseline correction so essentially you know it cleans out uh, stuff which is which it which is not due to the analyzer itself and and hopefully you'll get a you know better 
peak match uh, uh, or library match result. Uh, other thing I wanted to show you was uh, this MS settings. So um, this is the mass precision decimal point. Generally, I like to keep it at one because I think um, you know it's pretty accurate at once. So if you have a high high resolution instrument, you know, um, high mass resolution instrument, I mean, um, you know, so what you do if I do two and basically you have to click outside somewhere outside and you know it will show you up to two decimal points but I think uh, you know this instrument the um, you know TSQ 8000 EVO and the ISQ I think if you keep even though it says it's a unit mass resolution but I think uh, the mass calibration itself is good enough till one decimal point for example uh, let's see let's see so if I do a library search find in library so this is a uh, symmetrin molecular weight is 213 okay uh, that's fine it did <laughs> it uh, had it like it you know just gives it doesn't give me 213 point something right so let me let me go to uh, the NIST library itself uh, so this is symmetrin oh, okay so you see this the exact mass so 213.1 so in my experience you know going up to one decimal place on this instrument it's pretty accurate and that's what I like to keep the setting to to one decimal point uh, there are other things uh, which I don't generally use uh, if I you know, expand this window um, do not reduce noise yeah that's what I always use uh, relative thresholds so basically you know it will remove <laughs> all the peaks mass peaks which are f below 5% of the highest peak so if you do that you know you see it has cleaned up quite a bit which might be necessary for a noisy spectra and most of the if that noise is because of uh, you know the background or you can have a fixed threshold you know just keep one peak <laughs> I don't know who would do that but maybe there's a use for that uh, or you can do two peaks, three peaks, four peaks. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, generally, I keep this to, you know, if you're doing full scan, you know, general mass spec, I say do not reduce the noise. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, mass tolerance. So, uh, you know, like I said, like when you define your um, MS component, you know, I said there's no need to put 213.1 you can put 213 because you know there's a mass tolerance of 400 mmu so you know point so 213.25 and 212.75 so I think it will take all the masses in that range so uh, anyway the default is 500 mmu and I generally don't change that um, there's another thing called uh, inhibit tick integration for uh, inhibit integration for tick channel so this is uh, you know if I click this it won't integrate the tick channel uh, you know, so it has not integrated so it just removes all the integration and sometimes uh, this is useful if you're doing MSMS GCMS you know MSMS data because generally you know MSMS data the tick channel is of no use <laughs> and this you know simply it's just wasting uh, a lot of processing power and time to integrate all the small small peaks so uh, so, but for but for full scan, you know, this this has to be unchecked. Uh, I think I've covered everything over here. Um, maybe this is a good time to stop, huh? Okay.